Hello, Instagram. What is going on? Let everyone know that we're going live here. It's our, uh, this might be our last one for a little bit here, so we'll get everyone on. And uh, today we're going to be joined by Mr. Ryan Zulo from Alliance, makers of products like Gator Base and all the flex uh, offered through our Tackle Block authorized dealers. So let's see if we can get Ryan in here. There he is. Hey, Alex. Hola. What's up? Hola, amigo. Not too much, brother. You? No, not too much. Busy day? Well, I'm still here. I'm still at the office. So, yeah. <laughs> at least you can shoot some hoops in your spare time if you get any. It looks like yeah, you got that. Uh... the ball. You know what? <laughs> Honestly, one time I was in here and I, uh, I was talking with someone. I was doing like a, a, a Zoom call. And uh, they're like, I bet you can't get it. And no one's going to believe this, obviously. But I, I, I really just, I just did this over my shoulder and it went in there. And uh, that's it. That's, that's all I can say about that story because we don't have any, uh, well, have I any mean, proof of it. If you, if you decide to leave the hardscape industry, you can go work with the Raptors. <laughs> they need a few players right now. They're hurting. They're hurting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got hoops. We got darts. We got nerfs on like to uh like to pretend like we're playing over here but uh no we're just uh just working we're you guys have a good you guys have a good you know team culture over there the work environment everything looks everything i see at least looks always like you guys are having a good time having fun so it's nice to see uh we try we try it's uh you gotta you gotta love what you do otherwise work sucks for, for <laughs> sure 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah so, today was uh yeah, I'll let you go, Alex. Go no, ahead. no, go, go, go. What? What about today? No, I was going to say, I don't know. I mean, Montreal, Ottawa, similar, but we've gotten teased with, you know, these like 15, 18 degree days. And then today it was cold and rainy. And it's like, ah, I can't wait for the warmer weather to come back and let's get this season going. Yeah, it's still March. That, it's still know, March. The States have been, uh, been rocking for a while. But yeah, up in Canada, uh, GTA is uh, pretty much ready to go. They're going. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they're pretty much going, most of them. And then uh, uh, over here in Montreal, I'd say another two, three weeks. You were just saying in Ottawa about the same. Yep. And uh, that's it. The rest of Canada is pretty much the same thing, too. Within within uh, two, three, four weeks max, we'll, uh, we'll be rocking. But, yeah, it's uh, it's ghost season for everybody. Tyler, no you see, he's saying they're going hard already. Well, I mean, that's it's like the tropics for Canada. So, <laughs> we're right. yeah. there. And then, like I said, across the states, well, things are good. Things are good. People want backyards. They want front yards. They want hardscapes. And uh, we're all here to deliver. So Absolutely. Today's, uh, today's episode was about doing that more efficiently, being able to, uh, to grow, uh, grow our sales, grow our business, grow our efficiency. Uh, there's more work that we can do this year, again. So might as well figure out how we can get the most done. And uh, sometimes that means investing in tools and equipment from our friends at uh, Bartel Global or at Pave Tool. Sometimes that means changing the way that we build things, using uh, open graded base because we can save some compaction time. And sometimes that means looking at other products like Gator Base, synthetic right. based products. Why? Because these materials can help reduce the compaction time, uh, the excavation time. They eliminate some steps of compaction because they are themselves the base. Uh, and uh, they reduce your equipment usage, they're easier on everybody's backs, they get things done faster, so there's a lot of advantages, and that's what we saw in today's episode. We that's did get right. some questions. Uh, um, do you want to just jump into those questions, or is there anything that you wanted to add after seeing today's episode that maybe we, we forgot to mention, or things that came up since then in your world? I would say a big thing to remember, uh, Alex, and everybody watching is, you know, Gator Base as a synthetic base option, it, it might be new, newer to the hardscape industry, right? We're, we're coming on a decade, which, you know, maybe doesn't feel like a long time to the, the you know, the industry, but, you know, from a alliance side of it, uh, it's gone by fast, but it feels like it's been a long time for us getting all the education out there. But this technology, as new as it is to the industry, it's been around since the 70s, and we watch that today. 
And it's just another example of how technology is helping us advance, you know, how, like you said, we build things and, yep. you know, can you, can you give me off the top of your head, you know, two or three good examples of new technology that, you know, humans have adapted to that we've, that we've said we've welcomed it with open arms. Can you think of anything? Well, there's this. Yeah, absolutely. And right. Video calls has been a, a part of everyone's reality and that's made a lot of things more efficient thinking like as sell projects, I can complete more sales calls in a day because I don't need to go and mobilize to every single client's home, depending on the nature of where we are in the sales cycle. So that's one example. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of the vacuum lifting equipment that uh, we were talking about last week and the week before with, with, with Phil, like that stuff that, that has accelerated a lot of the installation of pavers. Uh, thinking of uh, motorized wheelbarrows. It's not necessarily new, but their popularity has picked up tremendously. It means that between the vacuum lifters and the motorized wheelbarrows, we're not limited to, you know, guys like you and me, you know, 6'2", 200 something pounds that, that can move heavy stuff because we can just throw our weight into it. Yeah, Anybody can work on a hardscape site now, which makes a huge difference because now we can get the best candidate based on their aptitudes and based on their attitude, not just based on their physical characteristics. This makes a huge difference when you're trying to build a good team for the future. And Gator Base plays right into that, actually, because anyone can build the base. Absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> the fact that you don't have to be, you know, the strongest kid in your gym class to come enter the hardscape world now, <clears throat> we're using technology smarter. We're using, you know, even just a sod cutter, which you wouldn't think would enter the hardscape realm, but all of a sudden we're using a sod cutter, setting that machine at <clears throat> the depth of four inches, which is what we typically see for a gator base excavation. Yep. We're shaving the sod, we're, we're getting our grade, you know, pitched and, and sloped accordingly to your project. And then all of a sudden you're taking the heavy equipment out of it sometimes. I mean, if you yeah, have it and you're making you payments have, exactly. on it. Like, like Brad yeah. said today, if you have the heavier equipment, use it. But For sure. Less. Yeah, put the smooth ditching bucket on it. Scrape off the four inches. That's as fast as I can think of a way to do it, right? Yeah. I mean, if you still have the skid steer there and you have access, yeah. you know, you make a small pile, a really small pile with your mini X or whatever equipment you're using. The skid steer takes two or three trips out to the front, loads it in the bin or your trailer. And that's almost, you know, depending on the size of the project, that's all really you're taking away. And yeah. you're significantly reducing the amount of time you spend off the job site. We always talk about the cost and the dumping fees and the travel and the aggregates coming back in. But as a former, <clears throat> sorry, as a former contractor with a very small crew, me and one or maybe two guys, I can't afford to have one or two of them off the site dumping materials, picking up materials. It's just not time effective, right? I mean, the longer we're not on site, the longer it's going to take to build that project. And that's something that's, that's difficult to calculate, right? That opportunity cost when the guy is not, or girl is not on site building, you know, those direct costs that we talked about with Pete, like four weeks ago now, yeah. <laughs> time flies, right? <laughs> but, For sure. Um, if, if you're not able to calculate the time lost with those people mobilizing for picking up materials or dumping materials, you're going to not make the margin that you thought you were going to make on the job. So it's super important to be able to calculate those things and tools, equipment, or materials that will help you control that labor and limit the mobilization of your people and limit the variability of your labor. You know, should it take five production hours? Should it take six production hours? Or should it, or might it take 10? Those things fl fluctuate a lot depending on the soils, depending on the climate, depending on the materials you're using. So any time that you can use a material or a tool or a piece of equipment that almost guarantees production rates, you should. Even if it costs a bit more, because at least you know exactly what it's going to cost. So when you price out your job, your price at the end of the day versus the cost, that difference that's supposed to be your profit stays where yeah. it's supposed to be. Absolutely. I mean... And we've talked about it, right? We have applications for Gator Base. We have jobs where it won't work. And I'm the first one to tell you when you can't use it. You know, I'm not going to, and that's every alliance rep. We don't want to see a failure. We don't want to see something yeah. happen. So we're not going to be out there promoting it for things we know it's not meant for. 
it's not for every job, right? It has its, it's a tool. And I always, even when I was a contractor, after I installed three of my own projects, other contractors or the dealer staff would ask me what I thought about it. And even back then I would say it's a tool, right? Think of it like a, you're wearing a tool belt, right? You got your mallet, you got your everything, you got everything has yeah. a purpose. <clears throat> and Gator Base is just another tool for you to use. And when the option is there, it's a use great, it. use it. Yeah, it's a great way to, to save some time on a job, you know, increase your, your efficiency. And, you know, we talk about it, right? If you, if you can save 20%, maybe that 20% equates to one day on a project. Mm -hmm. If you can add up all those days extra and, you know, maybe you're doing 30 projects in a year, that's, that's a month extra work you did. And if you have a short season, like maybe parts of Canada, great. You did more jobs. If you have a full 12 year season, like some Southern parts of the States, then you're just doing more work in general. It's, it's great to see. That's it. It, it's not more complicated than that. And really like you have to look at your business. And I like the example you gave. I'm running a business. I'm working probably between 30 and 40 weeks throughout the year in most of North America. There are other markets, like we said, they're further south. They're, they don't get the freeze thaw. They don't get as much rain. So all that weather stuff doesn't hurt them as much. But most contractors that are watching this that we're talking to are doing between 30 and 40 weeks of actual production per year. Depending on the size of your jobs, if you're doing smaller backyard patios, you know, 400, 500 square feet, the industry average is 442 square feet. So that's okay. why I'm saying four to 500, because that is what most projects are. If that is the project, most contractors are getting those projects done in approximately one week's worth of time. So your example is very accurate in the sense that if it's one week and you can shave off the equivalent of one day, even if it's most of a day and not a full day, sure, those hours pile up. And by the end of the year, that could be, even if it's one or two or three more jobs, those one, two, or three more jobs are more revenue. And because of the, the controlled nature of the, of the labor expended on the project, your profits are typically higher. And that's what Brad was talking about today. He was saying his projects, his backyard projects, when he's able, able to use Gator Base, he is able to come in at the same price as what's going on in the market. So he's very competitive or even a little bit lower, but have a little bit more money in his pocket. Why? because his costs overall are less. His equipment time is less, his labor time is less. Those are the two most expensive things on the job, not the materials. Right, I mean, we can never eliminate all our overhead and all our, you know, all the, the things that we, we, you know, we budget for that job. But if we can reduce multiple aspects of that project, you know, if we can put less hours on our equipment, that's gonna benefit us. Less yeah, fuel, yeah. if the trucks oh, are leaving yeah. the site less, less fuel spent, less time on labor, less aggregates purchased, less dumping fees. If we can reduce all these things, you know, to a certain extent, then we're going to be more profitable. You're never going to eliminate all these things. You're always going to have these components to a project. But if we can reduce them significantly or, you know, marginally, depending on the size of the job, like you said, then I think we're all going to be in a good place. That's it, man. Okay, so we get to some questions. Sure, absolutely. All right, perfect. Uh, first question, although we repeat it all the time, it's, I'm gonna ask you, when don't we use Gator Base? Because this was the question, is can I use this material in a driveway application? You know, I've been here, this is my fifth season, and Gator Base has been out longer than that. And if you haven't seen Gator Base, like you've said before, you must be hiding under a rock somewhere, right? Behind a tree, in the forest. <laughs> In Narn I don't know where you are, but you know, Gator Base, and then the next question, like you asked, can I use it in the driveway? Because I get this all the time. You could be at a you know a techo showcase, you could be at your dealer, and yeah. you could tell somebody all the benefits to Gator Base and all the savings and time and all the good components to it. You know, tell them that it's pedestrian only, and they're like, ah, oh, they're not too sure sometimes. But the next question of their mouth is, if I can use it in the driveway, though, I'll try it. They're not interested in pedestrian sometimes, but they'd rather use. They'd rather take way more risk and try it in the vehicular application. Yeah, which so, uh, do you do you feel that that's that's because people feel like well, pedestrian, that's not much load. So if it can do pedestrian, that's not saying much. If it does vehicular, then I believe that it's good. 
Yeah, maybe, maybe that, they're that's, that's maybe they're right. over quantifying what it could do in a vehicular yeah. application. It, it and, replaces and, six inches of base. So yeah. if the logic of like, well, you know, if I told you like six inches of of, of uh, granular material is your base material, you can use that under pedestrian application. In a driveway, you should be using eight, ten, twelve, uh, maybe sure. more, depending on the the traffic type and the and the climate and the soil put all those things together and that dictates the thickness. Right. But it's not because like six inches of base is not good under vehicular, but it's the same no. material. It's just, it's the thickness and it's ability to distribute the load. So could a gator base type material be used in a vehicular application, like under a driveway? It could, if it was a thicker panel with different dimensions. That's based right. On this material with this density, this product has been made for pedestrian applications. That's right. It's so over like we saw in the, in the show. Like, you, you can, like, we see the same material used for off ramps, like over here, the Highway 30. When they built the, the, the bridges to go and merge with Highway 40 and then go to the 401 into Ontario, the supporting structure is all built with the same material. In right. the video of today, the, the road in Alaska underneath the highway is with that same material. It's just different dimensions. It's a different format of the same product, the same material. That's right. It's got a it's got a higher load bearing capacity. It's got a different density, right? You know, when we talk about, as I mentioned earlier, it's not new technology. And then I kind of explained where it came from and where we see it otherwise, which is like you mentioned, building bridges and off ramps. That I think they kind of say, okay, well, if it's used for a roadway construction, this must be the same thing. Yeah, Can I put it in a driveway? That's it. But the answer is no. The answer is right now. With the, the thickness, the density, the makeup of Gator Base at this time is not suited for vehicular applications. It doesn't have, and I'll use this example from when we were doing our uh, seminars last year. Yeah. Gator Base has an you know, 8 PSI rating, and that's, that's overkill for pedestrian. You know, a zero-turn lawn tractor or, you know, a four-wheeler, that puts out a dynamic load of about 4.5 PSI, which is still well under... APSI. So yes. you have the odd, you know, lawn maintenance company run over your, your pathway or your backyard patio. It's going to be fine. Not a problem. But once you get into a small SUV or, you know, even a small sedan, you're, you're hitting 25 to 30 PSI and above. Now, dynamic or static, it's just, it, it supersedes the, the PSI rating, the load bearing capacity of what Gator Base can perform right now with. Yeah. Another thing to think about, and this, this, this is just like logically, I'm, I'm speaking as a business person looking at how much things cost and what the benefit is. So a cost benefit analysis. And if you think about it, where do you have the best access for excavation, for removal of soil, for introduction of a new material, for uh, mobilization of heavy compaction equipment, for mobilization of pallets of material, all of this stuff is all the driveway. The, yard. the driveways yeah. where you have the best access. Yeah. Therefore, it makes sense that I would consider using a material like Gator Base for. So yes, that's no on driveways. <laughs> so so that's a no on the yes no on the driveway. <laughs> uh, but I can use it in the backyard where access is typically much tighter. Therefore, sure. the cost benefit analysis because the material does cost more. If I compare a pile of gravel to a pallet of gator base, the gator base is significantly more expensive. Of course. But if I compare the gator base to the excavation time, machine wear, material cost, material handling, material compaction, material grading, put all those things together, then I'm pretty damn even. But the difference is I have gained a lot of time. Right. So in a driveway application, it may not necessarily work. The math may not work that much in your favor anyway. But using for a sure. backyard application all day because it's tighter. You can work with smaller machines in the backyard. You put those two things together. Smaller machine means longer to dig out the equivalent with a bigger machine. So though, that's how it offsets. And you end up making the right business decision to use a material like that. That's yeah. how it works. And I've never, I've never had to tear down a fence to, to do a driveway. I've never had to repair a lawn to do a driveway project. But I've had to do all these things in a backyard application, right? I've had to charge my customer sod repair, uh, you know, 
potentially have to repair the neighbor's lawn if it's that bad of an access and I got to go through multiple backyards. All these things are extra that as a contractor, you're not going to pay for that because that's part of the project. So if your customer has to pay for all that, then Gator Base becomes very attractive, right? Because you're not demoing the lawn. Yeah. You're not having to take down a fence to get a machine through there. You're able to get in and out with, you know, smaller equipment like a, you know, mm -hmm. a, a gas power wheelbarrow or a, yep. a sod cutter or something like yep. that. So those all things those things. through a gate, man. You're not even yeah. taking the fence post out for the gate. No. And that, that's, that's the win. So that's of what course. you have to look at. Is, it, is, is this type of material good for every single backyard project? No. No. If no. you have fantastic access, you can get all your stuff in there, then you're probably going to finish winning doing it the way you're doing it now. But if that's not the case, then this is a fantastic solution that helps bring the cost of the project down a little bit that allows you to either make the decision to pass those savings on to your customer, making you the low bidder on the project, which allows you to secure the sale faster, which again, from a business standpoint, turning my marketing lead into a converted and closed sale in less effort is efficiency. So that's good for your business because you're wasting less time. And alternatively, if you don't want to pass the savings on to the customer or you want to pass them on in a clever way, you add value. So if I'm saving you a couple thousand dollars on labor, I'm going to propose to you instead, well, this same patio that you called me to build, if we build it this way, I could give you two options. I could do this patio for this much, which I know is going to be a little bit less than other prices that you're seeing out there. Or for the same money that you were prepared to invest with me, I'm able to upgrade these materials to like an HD2 plus or a clean block product, which is going to be maintenance free for you. It has a nice sealer on it. We're not going to have to worry about stains. Or maybe I can add you a little fire feature. We put that in the corner. Or maybe we put some lighting over here. Or maybe we do a nice elevated curb to keep your plant, your, your mulch beds clean and off of the pavers. Or maybe, like it just, it gives you these other options where you're bringing way more value to the customer and it's taking you the same amount of time and right. you're putting more money in your pocket. Everybody wins. The customer gets more, you get more, and your team gets more because they're not breaking their backs with a bunch of heavy stuff. Absolutely. And I, and I think, and you're exactly right, Alex. And even sometimes though, when you have, uh, you have wide open access and you can still get all your equipment in there, I have a ton of contractors that I deal with you know, in the Ontario market that their crew, they love installing on GatorBase so much that they don't want to do a traditional job if they don't have to. So even if they have the access for a couple of machines or, you know, they can get everything in there. Sometimes the crew just likes the extra features of Gator base, able to walk on your final grade, able to slide in stage pavers, having a super clean site, right? You're working in the fall, all the leaves, the debris blowing blow everywhere, good. blow it off. You know, there's just so many extra benefits that we don't really, you can't quantify that. That's just, yeah, that's just great stuff. That's it. So uh, there was one of the questions, uh, one of our fans here, Icon, who's uh, on here every week, he's asking, um, he's having a hard time convincing his business partner, his dad, okay. uh, was, you know, partner and dad, mm -hmm. the upfront cost of the Gator Base uh, is made up by the time savings. He's saying, is there some kind of like cut sheet or some, some kind of visual that you can use to be able to show uh, to, to make it more like, here's the math. Did you guys do the math to show that? You know what? Everybody's business, everybody's company, all their costs are different. Depends on the market you're in. Depends on your overhead recovery. Depends on how many employees you have labor, right? So the best way, the easiest way to do this, you know, as an individual company is to go on the AllianceGator.com website okay. and you go under the Gator Base product. And we actually have a Gator Base calculator. And you okay, can input. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna do it right now. Here, let's sure. this thing around. All right. So alliancegator.com. Hold on. Let me get this out here. Okay. Let's load the page. All right. Here we are. Now Perfect. we're going to go. We're going to go to products. Okay. Up here. Yep. And we're going to find Gator Base. Yep. Oops. Gator Base. Oh, Jesus. Look at my pen over. <laughs> what the hell did I click on? Oh, I, God, you're just I, am gonna... aging, I am aging before your eyes here. Okay, we're on the website now. All right, so I haven't been on myself here. in a little bit, but 
Calculator. You found it easy? Yeah. There you go. So you click on calculator, and then a lot of the fields are preset for different fields you'd probably want to enter, right? Yeah. I'm just waiting to – there we go. Okay. Perfect. So basically – So do we, do we want to do one here? Sure. Go for it. All right. We'll help uh, – yeah. I know we have I know we have a lot of average numbers or typical numbers that people put out. To, so let's, let's go a, ahead. A twenty by twenty patio. Sure. Okay, nice and average. Twenty by twenty. Okay, so that's four hundred square feet. Uh, I got uh, me and two guys. That sound good? Sure. So a total of three. Total of three. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so there you go. So excavation cost, truck excavator and equipment per hour. So this this is like doing like an average, I guess you guys like pulled a couple contractors to figure out like what the labor per hour looks like and then the cost. I can change this stuff though, right? Yeah, you should be able to. I, you know, to fit it based on your, your, uh, your exact or numbers. Okay. I know... You know, this, this calculator, these numbers, uh, back in 2019 when we did our Gator U, uh, we polled, you know, hundreds of contractors and we asked them to give their input on what the averages are. And this is a pretty general idea of what, you know, a typical hardscape company would, would uh, you know, bill out or cost for certain things. So using this calculator, you can give yourself a pretty rough idea, a pretty good rough idea, the cost of Gator Base as a product itself. And uh -huh. then once you factor in, the labor, the overhead recovery, the, you know, all the, this stuff the, here? the hauling, the dumping, all this stuff on the right of the calculator. Yeah. You know, once that's all calculated and all the numbers are inputted and you generate, you know, a result, I can't see too well, but, uh, you know, you're looking at it yourself. Well, in this case, you... saying I'm saving 16.3 man hours. So okay. there are three people on site. Uh, that's a little more than five, five and a half uh, hours. Of, of a day. So I'm saving Perfect. a little more than half a day with my three person team. Awesome. And that's on a 400 you know, square foot. Patio. Four, exactly. But that's, yeah. a, that's a job that normally I would complete probably in four or five days. So I save yep. half a day, half a day is pretty damn good. Right. And if I save a know, half day every week yep. over the course of my 30 weeks, I saved 15 days. That's three bonus weeks. That's three bonus jobs. That's the game with this. Exactly. Okay, perfect. Well, Icon is saying that's exactly what he needed, so that's good. One happy customer. <laughs> awesome. You know, I, I have a lot of contractors who I deal with who have, you know, multiple co-owners or partners, and there's always one who's a little more progressive or open to trying new things, and yeah. the, other one, the other one's hell-bent on not changing his ways, and he likes the way he's doing it. And then eventually, usually the one who – who's on board is the one who knows all the numbers for the business, who prices some of these jobs and knows how long it takes their crew and the profit. Right. And I've had, you know, several contractors tell me that they don't even tell the partner anymore that they're going to use Gator base. They just spec it on the job and they go get the materials <laughs> and they do it. And then afterwards, the other guy's like, I can't believe how much quicker we did that. And he's like, it doesn't feel any different. It doesn't look any different, right? Because once the interlock's down, you know, the polymeric sand is in, you can't tell you're on a gator base job. That's the thing, man. Like, honestly, I'll, I'll tell you from my own experience. Like, for people who haven't tried this, I was super skeptical when this product came out. Me too. And, uh, like, like, super skeptical. And, and, you know, full disclosure, like, I know a lot of people work at Alliance. I know you. Like, we go back way, way, way back. But of course. I know a lot of people there. And they're, they're, they're saying, like, yeah, you guys should be talking about this at your showcases. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. You know and we decided we were going to wait a year. Like, the product came out. We didn't talk about it at our shows the first year. Because we were all like, you tell me I'm not going to dig. I'm not going to put in this much stone. I'm just going to put your little piece of styrofoam. That's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, actually, at my dad's house is the first installation, the first, like, pilot project that was done even before yep. the product came out. And I was still skeptical. It had been in the ground already. It had done a full year. But I'm like, right, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see. This backyard hasn't moved in forever. The house was built like 40 years ago. And uh, every single time I go to my parents' house, I go check that back, that back patio. And I swear, 
It has not moved a single bit. It does not feel like spongy or springy or anything because everything is locked in. And it's something right. that it, it, it's – to this day, I still don't, like, fully understand how it's fully, full, like, completely solid, but it is. You're, you're right. Because it all becomes one system. Yep. You put the base, you put the pavers, you have the edge of strength that's screwed in, so it's totally biting right into that, 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 uh, that gator base. Mm -hmm. Where do you want it to go? The sand is, is uh, creating the sheer transfer of load from unit to unit, yep. and the base is dense enough. It's a very dense material that is doing that conical distribution of load that we normally see in our, in our gravel material. Instead of it looking like this, it's looking like this. Right. So it's achieving the same thing in the end. By the time that load reaches the, the soil subgrade, it has been spread out enough to support pedestrian load and even that super light vehicle like golf carts and, and mowers and, and light yeah. tractors and things like that. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, contract who's installed it and then obviously now working here with Alliance and learning way more about the product and really how it works, I, I still sometimes can't believe how well it's performing, right? I mean, yeah. every year we achieve greater and greater results. And it's like, how, how, I mean, we're almost at a decade, right? So it hasn't failed there's after a decade. To, there's nothing not like tomorrow, to not like tomorrow, all the jobs in the world are gonna fall apart, right? It's not gonna happen. <laughs> no. If it does, if it doesn't come and work for you guys, but. <laughs> but it won't. But it won't, exactly, it won't. And I hear time and time out that, yeah. Uh, guys who are using guys and girls, sorry, who are using Gator Base, uh, they they honestly wish they had been using it longer. And you know, there's there's companies who have only been around for two or three years, and Gator Base is now close closing on a decade. But some of these contractors I speak to that are using it quite often, they're, they're telling me that they've been able to scale back some of their you know equipment and what was costing them so much before, and it was impacting them, and especially in our market where we can't work 12 months of the year and we have these payments on machines that are just sitting there. If they can maybe rent that equipment for the projects like the driveways or some of these structural retaining walls that they can't use Gator Base on, maybe that's more cost effective for them, right? Because a lot of these guys and girls, they have to convert their snow companies over to hardscape businesses. And then eight, seven, eight months later, it's the going back and they got to convert everything back to snow. And you just don't have a need for all this equipment sometimes. Sometimes you do, right? You have a backhoe, sure. You have all your trucks. You can put a plow on it. But, you know, some of the stuff you can't use all year round. And right. I got lots of guys who are just saying incorporating Gator Base now, three, four, five years. It's definitely changed their business for the better. And, you know, every we're all in this industry. I mean, we love the job. We love the industry, right? I mean, we're all proud of it. But ultimately, we're in business to make money. So how do you make more money? Well, you do more jobs. And the only way to do more jobs is to finish more jobs. More revenue. More, uh, more revenue, yes. Yeah, sorry. to make you more profit. Unless you but, do all the rest of the math, but yeah. For sure. But the only way to complete more jobs is to do more jobs. And Gator Base helps you move on to that next job one day faster, a day and a half, half a day faster. And at That's the end of the, the day, it's... Sure it yeah. So uh, I wonder if there's any other... Oh, okay, well, there you go. There is a question literally right there. Uh, if you do, <laughs> I was just going to say, I wonder if there's more questions. If you have two different stone thicknesses, can you use wash concrete sand to make up the difference? Ryan? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know, you know, there's there's manufacturers like Tackle Block who have great tolerances and we see, you know, products like Blue 16, Villaggio and kind of your, all your dry cast products basically, you know, at the same height. We don't need any bedding layer on the gator base. We can install them and they're all flush and everything looks great because you won't be able to achieve that, you know, consolidation of the paver into that bedding layer like a traditional job because right. the paver on the gator base won't go anywhere. Right. But let's say, let's say you yeah, love uh, West Mount. I'm doing West, West Mount, Mount with, uh, with uh, I don't know, with para slabs. So sure. 80 millimeter or three and an eighth mm -hmm. and 60 millimeter, two, uh, 60 millimeter, two and three eighths. Right. So you would build your gator base job. You'd have the gator base down. You'd install your thicker paver first, like your West Mount, okay. right? Do either the inlay first, or maybe it's a border. And then after that, you've already done the pre-leveling for the gator base. So now with your screed rail, essentially as fast as you can pull a screed bar along two pipes, you can create with the wash concrete sand, 
a second bedding layer on top of the gator base, which now you can add a different thickness paver or slab mm -hmm. into, right? Like the para, or maybe you're using, you know, blue 60 with the West Mount and you want to create, uh, you know, two different colors or textures or just given a different design, right? An inlay. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But then you sand for the, for the, the thinner paver and you'll have the same protection. The gator base is going to do the work below both. The, the West Mount or the 80 mil will sit right on the, on the gator base yep. and the sand on top of it will just be, you know, uh, a separate layer for the newer, just, thinner paver. It's just, yeah. just small, right? 20, I'm talking 20 millimeters. Well, I mean, another thing you do is you notch your screen board, right? So let's say using a, a piece sure. of like a, a two by six to, uh, to screen or two by four, but two by six would probably be easier. Mm -hmm. You notch that screen board. So it rests right on the, uh, on the West Mount. So you yep. know, West Mount, West Mount, and you screed off the two, you, you adjusted your, your height, you just pulled the sand, and you're good to go. Yeah. Fill your... And it could be sand, your... or it could be uh, number eights also. Absolutely. Right? So both options will work for you. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, you know, you guys talk about open graded. Alliance is on the same page. We support yeah. that. And, you know, two options. The sand may be a little more forgiving on the gator base, but, you know, if you have uh, 20 mil, it should be just fine to... To put the chip stone as well. Well, I'll tell you, like the, the showcase job we did uh, 2019 for the 2020 mm -hmm. show. So everyone who saw that show, if you didn't see that show, by the way, you can go to the Hardscaper YouTube channel and there's a playlist. You can watch that whole showcase from last year, from 2020. Uh, You're talking about Sean, yeah, Sean, yeah, Sean from Premier? Yeah, from Premier Outdoor. Nice. We built that whole thing on Gatorbase. Uh, the whole thing, and there's there's a lower landing and there's a raised area too. And basically, what we did was we had the gator base um, wall product, and because the borealis wall product is a wet cast product uh, and it's four feet long, there are some dimensional tolerances or, or variances that may exist. Sure. So to protect ourselves, although the product is pretty bang on, to be safe better safe than sorry, we screened a bedding layer for that material. So when building with those longer products, because at four feet long, even a, a 16th of an inch difference over that length, it You'll makes a it. difference. Yeah. So by putting a small bedding layer of number eights, we were able to make any small adjustments and have a structure that was sitting perfectly level on that uh, patio structure. Right. So the answer, yeah. to answer the question, yeah, you can put a setting bed on top. And if you're working with materials that are more subject to that, um, even natural stone, yeah. then yeah, a setting bed is more appropriate because it allows you to have a nice smooth finish for the pavement at the end. Exactly. And we show both options. You know, we, we talk about the, the bedding layer of sand on top uh, a lot with Tackle Block and with other products like natural stone, like you said. And, you know, the majority of the jobs I'm on, uh, most dry cast pavers, you know, I'm in Ottawa, Canada, and, you know, we have a lot of tackle block that goes down here. And, the, you know, almost all the jobs I'm on uh, in my area are mostly tackle block. And I see a lot of contractors using Blue 60 and Bellagio and, uh, you know, Antica and everything, basically, and no issues. All the yeah. tolerances are perfect, and you don't even notice at the end of it. You install your polymeric sand, you consolidate your sand like you have to, and then once the water activation happens and you walk away, you, you almost can't even tell it's a gator base job. That's, you can't. You can't. <laughs> you can't. There's no way to know. Um, Jeff, uh, Jeff Taphouse, uh, our friend down south, is asking, concrete sand on gator base to level seating walls when the patio or gator base is pitched. Can you do that? So uh, what he's saying is, uh, I got my patio. I'm pitching my patio away from the house. But the benches or the seat walls or the fire pit, those things got to sit level. Right. Can I use a bedding layer to make sure that those structures sit level when the rest of the patio is pitched? I'll yeah. let you go. I have an answer. I'll let you go. Sure, absolutely. Uh, you know, sometimes, I'll start with this one. Sometimes, you know, if the seating wall, you know, is long enough, depending on the slope of the project, if it's not significant, sometimes contractors will, will follow the grade if it's not a big deal. But obviously, we want to have uh, most of them sitting level, like you said, fire pits especially, and benches and seats. Well, you don't want to put your glass of bourbon down on the bench beside no. you and see. It roll <laughs> over. No, absolutely. That's a waste <laughs> of bourbon. <laughs> but, yeah, so Gator Base, and I did this myself back 
before we endorsed walls on Gator Base, that project that actually showed that I built, uh, you know, back in 2015, I believe, um, in today's episode, those planter boxes, they actually are on Gator Base as well. And that patio had a, a decent fall from the from the house to that back fence. So I uh, I definitely, I re-screeded sand on top of the Gator Base, uh, obviously to level out that wall. And yeah. then it was inside the patio, of course, so the pavers all retained that sand that's in the yeah. that's right but in the instance of having you know a seating wall maybe on the edge the outside perimeter of your of your patio you know you, you don't need a lot of sand to level that block and your edge restraint on the gator base will encapsulate that bedding there right so it's not going to fall out and on that, the outside. and that's a key thing we just said with the edge restraint is something that, that a lot of people uh who are newer in the industry uh omit is the edge restraint exists not only to hold the pavers in place it also holds the bedding layer in place that's so right so whether it's on gator base or on dense graded material or on open graded material mm -hmm. your edge restraint should be holding in your bedding and your paver well i mean this is way too big there but here <laughs> it's a scale your yep. paver and your bedding layer both so that this bedding layer doesn't migrate out because if the mi bedding layer migrates out then your paver will settle. And if right. this paver settles, then your joint over here opens up. And if this joint opens up, then it's the beginning of the end of the failure for the pavement. So edge even worse, even critical. worse if it's a wall. And, and, and especially in your wall situation, mm -hmm. you're using that bedding layer to, to level out so your wall block sits nice and, and true. But you gotta make sure that your edge restraint is there. Yep. So it's encapsulating the bedding and holding that wall block in place. When talking make about sure, the edge restraint, sorry. No, oh, sorry. What were you going to say? No, I was going to say, and you know, if you are going that route with the gator base and the wall, and maybe a sand bedding layer for the wall, the first course, spikes just won't be, you know, 10-inch common nail, 12-inch common nail, spiral, whatever. There's not a lot of bite for that. So if you're building a wall with gator base, you make sure, first off, your gator base extends 12 inches on the exterior of the wall side for extra support. Okay. But then we want to make sure that there, right? I think the roll, we want the extra there. But then with the gator edge, we want to make sure that we are using the screws because, you know, if you do have a bedding layer below your wall block, if that edging was ever, you know, potentially moved or disrupted because the nail just wasn't securely holding it, you know, you could have some bedding layer migrate outwards and that wouldn't be good. So the gator screws mechanically open underneath the gator base, they permanently lock it there. And you'll never be able to, you'll have to physically rip the gator edge out of the gator base. Otherwise, it, it, it's there forever, essentially. Yeah, that's it. And, and ultimately, the screw exists primarily to anchor the edge restraint to the, to the base. The edge restraint, we're not so much concerned about edge restraint moving up and down. This is for all edge restraints. We're not so mm -hmm. much concerned about the vertical movement. We're concerned about the horizontal movement. Because for the edge sure. restraint is holding the pavers in place so the joint widths remain consistent the whole way through. Uh, so that's it for the uh, for the screws and for the uh, for the edge restraint. Uh, how does extreme? I was going to ask that question. So thank you, Ottawa Geo Pros. Your your extreme edge product, which is uh, basically a modified Portland cement mixed with uh, with fibers. So it's a fiber reinforced concrete. Uh, we talked about using that when building on open graded materials. Because typically, unless you're using the hybrid edge from, uh, from Pave Tool, which has that wedge-shaped spike that prevents right. lateral movement through the open-graded stone, you can't use regular screws in open-graded stone. So that material allows you to trowel in a concrete that's fiber-reinforced. So even if there is expansion contraction with the seasons, it's, it's bound together. It doesn't just crumble and flake and fall apart. Right. It's part and of the, modified, the modified blend of that, that concrete. Mm -hmm. Now, does it work on gator base? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Uh, Geo Pro, Ottawa Geo Pros. Thank you, Connor. The extreme edge, like you said, you know, concrete, there's two types. You guys are exclusive to saying that. What is it? Cracked and going to crack. Cracked and going to crack. Oh, let's all have a good laugh. Mixed or mixed on site concrete. It yeah. will crack eventually. So, you know, Alliance took it a step further, and not only did we – you know, throw a bunch of fibers into it. Our fibers actually, when, you know, activated and mixed with water, they actually create like a 3D web also, right? So if you had a bunch of fibers in your concrete 
and then you know the crack happened over here, but the fibers are all over here. That's no good. Everything's not tied together. So no, these it's integrated the whole way through. That's right. They swell up and they create like a mesh like across the whole structure, uh, which is awesome, right? It's polymer modified, so there's no such thing as flexible concrete. But if there's one, that'd be you know the ultimate. Forgiveness. Well, it has just, some flexibility. It, that's it not has true. some. Like, there is such a thing as flexible concrete, but okay. it, it, it's it's on a minimal level. Like, right. You're not bending it like a no, 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 no. But no. there is some flexing, some expansion, contraction of it. For sure. But having a polymer modified concrete makes it more flexible. That's and, right. And the flexibility, again, not something that you see that you can bend it, but when moisture gets in, when water gets into concrete and water freezes, Mm -hmm. Water expands. If you have a material that has that, that microscopic level of flexibility, that expansion allows it to stretch out instead of crack and fall apart. Right. That's the difference with a polymer modified concrete that you mix on site like Extreme Edge. Exactly. So with the uh, Extreme Edge on Gator Base, what we want to do in this instance is actually we want to cut the Gator Base flush with our paver. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, okay, I got you. Oh, okay, yeah, go. so yeah. we're not actually going to install the concrete on the gator base because that's not really going to adhere very well. Anything. It that's can't bite into anything, right? Okay. We have j drainage channels and the holes for water to percolate, percolate through, but it wouldn't be enough to bite onto anything. So we cut the gator base flush with the flush paver. With the okay. And then we actually pull back the bedding layer. The bedding layer that's below the gator base. Below the gator base. Okay. We pull that back a little bit and slightly some of the native soil. So we're actually going to remove the geotextile and scrape because away some of that. Or bite into the geotextile. Okay. That's so right. I can do it, but I got I to gotta get down to the soil depth. That's right. And then we're going to actually just kind of dig in a little bit under the gator base, create a bit of a shelf. And then we're actually going to trowel and push some of that extreme edge underneath the gator base slightly so now the edging is against you know on your your slope yeah. against your paver halfway up yeah and then it's going to come down below the gator base yeah and, and it, slightly I mean, in and then it's really going to tie that whole area kind of like that together good can i ask me a stupid question mm -hmm. that seems really complicated why wouldn't i just use the edge restraint like the gator edge with the screws yeah i Good question. I would too. I would use okay. the Gator Edge <laughs> okay. and the screws all day uh, with that. But there's guys who love Concrete Edge. There's guys who are hell bent on using the, you know, some sort yes, of. If you really want to use it, that's the way to use it in that situation. But it, it's definitely not the most efficient way. No, it's it's in our technical data sheet, right? We got we got a, you know a, a diagram or a spec for open graded, for traditional, for concrete overlays, and for Gator base. So there. We have an application where you can use the extreme edge. We have all the cross sections, but you know, for efficiencies, which is why we use Gator Base, I would always go the the screws and uh, the plastic right. edge route for sure. Yeah. Okay, uh, there was a question we got through our chat today, and they were asking, "Can I like, can I use this for permeable applications?" If now, you build, you, yeah. you just made me think of it because you said there's the drain channels. So on yep. Gator Base. Everything has these channels that drain water. Any water that does get in through the joints can go through those channels and there's holes throughout the whole thing so that the water goes down into the bedding layer below. But is that enough for permeable? So good question. Uh, I wish I had a piece here to show you guys, but if you've seen a piece of gator base or you go online, you'll notice that there are, there are ton, tons and tons of drainage holes on the actual panel itself, yeah. right? And every... Like, every every yep, flip it around yeah go like that there you go right so you can see all those holes and each hole on all four 45 degree angles has a you know one percent slope in the channel so it's actually directing water to these holes and the channels are throughout so not only can you use the channels as reference lines like 45 degrees and you know you can use them to lay pavers in a straight line their main purpose is to get water off the gator base and into the subgrade. Mm -hmm. So gator base with all those holes is actually highly permeable itself. A lot of water will pass through it. The difference is we have such a shallow excavation with gator base that if there was all this water to pass through the pavers into the gator base, you really have almost an inch, maybe a little bit you more. You don't have the reservoir component. 
when there's nowhere the there's nowhere to contain and, and yeah. you know exfiltrate the water or even give it enough time if you have super sandy soils or if they you know if they were able to you permeate still through have an inch. it'll just fill up kind of like a bathtub so no, no in our true in our true gator base build you know the four or five inch excavation total from top of paved surface you really can't use gator base as a permeable install if you were to build a true permeable install with you know your your reservoir below and all that stuff you could you could actually put gator base as your yeah. final layer if you want it for the efficiencies if you want it for all the other benefits that come with gator base and by all means you could over engineer that product and kind of upsell it or add another layer of security but we not, actually, not for yeah uh, uh, yeah on a traditional permeable system probably not the, the best way to do it we did use it on a project that we did in 2017 uh, it was part of the 2018 showcase you can mm -hmm. find that video on youtube too but actually you won't find much about that part because it was the one with the big g-force uh, wall with the staircase right. going up the middle in the backyard because we went they weren't sure what they wanted to do. We were doing the wall, and they're like, okay, let's do the patio. And they're like, oh, but we want it to be permeable. And we're like, well, the wall's already started, so we didn't want to exit everything out. So we just went with as, as thin a base as we could to have enough of a reservoir to allow mm -hmm. water to, to soak into the soil over a 24 to 48 hour period. And sure. we supplemented the rest with a layer of gator base, but probably not the most efficient from a cost perspective way right. to do it. But does right. water flow through it? Yeah, water flows right through it. That, that's absolutely. Not the it's the right. reservoir component, like you said. Exactly. All right. We got any more questions, or are we uh, we moving on to the uh, the prizes here? Let me just uh, scroll, scrolling. Last call for questions. Seven fifty-two. What if I use nitro on Gator Base? Is the infiltration rate slow enough with the proper slope to still be able to use it? Ah, great question. So your product, the, the new nitro sand, mm -hmm. which is, um, uh, I guess, a, it's like an epoxy-based joining Re compound, right? It's re resin, resin, -based. resin base, resin base. Yes, thank you. So contrary to polymeric sand, which everyone in North America knows very well, mm -hmm. uh, this resin-based sand, which has been used for a long time in Europe, where they're, they're ahead of us with the industry. They, they use hardscape products way more often in way more applications and have been doing so for way longer than we have here. So right. a lot of the stuff comes from there and then it gets here. So that's, this type of material is new to us, but it's not new to the world. And uh, this resin-based material has an advantage because uh, you can apply it when the material is wet, you can apply it when it's raining, you can apply it when it's hot, it's cold, it doesn't matter. Um, and this material does not leave any polymer case and it's basically fully activated. So if you've ever had the issue of like, you know, not watering your sand properly and you get that crust on the top and the rest stays loose, that mm -hmm. can't happen with this material. I'll let you know about the other benefits, yeah. but that's just kind of like me teeing up like what this yeah. is versus polymeric sand. Yeah, exactly, Alex. The, the nitro sand, like you said, is a resin-based product, which is air cured. So this product is already essentially, you know, activated, it's active. To, yeah. activated. It's active out of the packaging. And although you said it can't leave a polymeric haze, what it could leave is, you know, a resin stain on the surface. So it's very important that we pre-wet uh, all our surfaces, all our concrete, right? If it's the patio, the, the retaining wall, make sure your tools are wet down, all the, down. the foundation, everything, right? Because if you do get some of this, it can leave a stain and there's nothing we can do about that. We make sure on our packaging, it's very evident, right on the top of the lid, no matter what, it says pre-wet everything. So... If we soak everything down, like you said, we can install this all season. We can install this above three degrees Celsius, which is 37 Fahrenheit. I Maybe? No. <laughs> I've lived in Canada for too long. My I whole life. Google it, but it's, uh, yeah, pretty much I believe it's 37. right above freezing. You're good to go. That's right. So you soak everything down, whether it's a nice sunny day, if it's a rainy 37. day, 37, nailed it. <laughs> um, if it's a rainy day, then you're already good to go. Everything should be wet. But basically, the, the material is installed wet, and the water is actually uh, what's consolidating this material. So there's no compaction equipment. You know, I mean, other people have tried using a roller compactor maybe and trying to see, but you don't need to. It's not necessary. Uh, and I've no. installed some of this too. And, and like, what happens is the water acts as a lubricant to help the, the sand particles flow with this resin. 
That's and right. what happens is the water also ends up creating a vacuum. So as the sand starts going down in the joints, That's right. you just keep hosing it. And it's, it's pulling down and it's consolidating as it going. So you, you don't need to run that roller compactor or vibratory plate compactor on top of it. It's not going to achieve anything. That's right. Like outdoor projects, as long as the water's flowing, you're good to go. The nitro sand is, is going down. So, um, yeah. So aside from, you know, being able to install it at any point, uh, the nice thing is that it does set up from top to bottom. It basically becomes very rigid, rock hard. So you're not going to have to worry about, you know, a small crust layer or anything like that. Once the yep. material dries out, it becomes sol solid. It solidifies. So as long as there's moisture still present in the product, it will take longer to set up. But once all that moisture, all that water leaves the material, it, it's air cured. So it, it dries and it's, it's solid. And the nitro product uh, Alliance wants to, you know, err on the, the side of caution. It's again for pedestrian only because this material, as strong as it is, it can be uh, somewhat brittle. So if there's any movement in the patio, the joints could crack. It won't necessarily erode, but the joints could crack and, you know, stuff like that can happen. And I've seen that with some other products in the market, maybe. Uh, contractors have had uh, tried to use it in the, the vehicular application. And I know one instance where the pavers actually didn't move because the pavers were built so well, but the asphalt that was within the apron, it actually shifted because it was built obviously terribly, one inch of asphalt on little aggregate on dirt. Oh, and uh, yeah, so when the asphalt heaved, the, the resin material in the, app, the driveway application, uh, it stayed, it actually came up with the asphalt and then it was kind of just floating there uh, in nowhere land. So Alliance on the, you know, on the air of caution, we want to keep it in the uh, you know, pedestrian applications yeah. only. So yeah, but it's uh, it's a great product. And another benefit is it's uh, it's semi-permeable. So back to the question. Uh, what Geo, GeoPro's question, yeah, uh, which seemed like 10 minutes ago, <laughs> is that, uh, <laughs> is that, uh, yeah, it right. actually is. Oh, go, go. <laughs> It, it, yeah, so with the right slope and, you know, the, the pitch of your patio, the majority of the, the runoff or the water will have its runoff. It will end up back in the grass off the project, right? So around areas where you have poor drainage, maybe around a pool, it's hard to get water to move. So instead of putting in, a, you know, a channel drain or trying to put in something like that, you know, you could use nitro in those applications and have the water percolate down through the subgrade and eventually make its way out. But it will never be enough. To, to fill up or to clause, you know, any flooding. It's not, it doesn't meet permeable spec. You can't use this product in a true permeable job. So yes, to answer the question is you can use this on gator base because, you know, the little water that does pass through it will drain through the gator base back into the subsoils and no issues. Most of the surface water will run off of the pavement. The absorption rate of this jointing material is higher than polymeric sand, but not so it's high. Right that it should be a concern for water accumulation below the gator base in that one inch layer of bedding. Exactly. And just as a kind of like, a, you know, um, the word escapes me here, but an asterisk, let's say, you know, this material as, you know, semi-permeable as it is over time, if there's no maintenance involved, if the homeowners or the, you know, the project where it is, if it's not maintained, those, those small, those, those small pores. voids where water could pass yeah. through, the pores could fill up with, you know, organic debris and whatever from the environment. And then all of a sudden, it, you basically just have polymeric sand in your joint. The water will not continue to pass through. So some maintenance, some responsibility on whoever owns this project. Obviously, maybe a maintenance plan needs to be put in place. But over time, you know, the if permeability percentage. That, yeah, if you're trying to that's use right. it for that benefit. But that's, that's right. not the main benefit. That's kind of. Exactly kind of a byproduct of this type of material is it has a higher absorption rate, but it's not, that's not a problem for the product. You the second it. thing is it's also not, um, that means that you shouldn't look at it as a permeable solution. 100%. Okay. All right. Well, that, well that's it for questions. It's eight o'clock. Is it question. already? Yeah. To the, uh, Ryan, thank you very much for uh, for joining us. Um, what bourbon have you been sipping on the whole time? Oh, good question. I knew I brought the bottle up for a good reason. It's uh, Eagle Rare Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 10 years old. Oh, very nice. I don't fool around with bourbon. Do you need my address? Do you need mine? Because you're welcome to come over here anytime you want. <laughs>
All right. Uh, what is it? I look like Gerard Butler from 300. Yeah, I don't think so. Maybe the 300 pound version, but not, uh, not the Gerard Butler of 300. <laughs> Zambuka or Uzo? Neither. No, thank you. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, Ryan. I'm going to get to the, uh, the prizes here. Uh, always a pleasure. Uh, and uh, Ryan, you are the best way to reach you. I guess you're a Lion Skater Ontario. Yeah, you can reach uh, either Jeff Cunningham, John Zimmerman, or myself. We're three Ontario reps who run the Alliance Gator Ontario page. You can also connect with us through the at GatorBase page. We all uh, take a share with that one. And then all our Alliance reps across the board, whether it's at Alliance Gator or our corporate page or any of your local reps, we've got almost 40 of us, and we'd love to answer any more questions that we didn't get to today. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Cheers, Alex. Go. I'm going to get to the prizes here. So, right. everybody, uh, today is the last one of the six-week series here. Um, so, we're going to go uh, pretty hard with the, uh, the prizes. So, everyone who's watching today was eligible to win. And we're going to go. First thing we're going to go with is uh, we have – actually, let me pull this up here. From Pave Tool. I'm going to talk about one of the products. Uh, we have the Quickie Wall Street from Pave Tool. Uh, together with the uh, BL180 and BL450, which are two clamps, one for picking up multiple wall blocks at the same time, and then the other one for picking up one wall block at, at a time. Just showing you guys, this is something that a lot of people laugh at. They're like, oh, those, those nunchucks. But this is a product that really saves a lot of time when you're screening out for walls. Why? Because you can establish your grades very quickly. You can use your laser level to establish the elevation and then you can screed your finished layer of your base, um, either a setting bed or the actual base material to get to the right height. So it makes it a lot faster than trying to uh, level each block one by one because you've created a perfectly level, um, basically level pad to receive those blocks. So you take a bit of time to set each one to make sure that you're perfectly level. And then once you're good, you can fill in with your material, you screed off of that and screeding and, and re replacing the material around uh, screed pipes is something that we all do every day. So there's nothing new there. So we're giving that away with two lifters. And uh, the lucky winner of that uh, little kit from Pave Tool is Eric Semp from Twin Bros Company in Ottawa, actually. So congratulations, uh, Eric from Ottawa. The uh, next prize we have from Alliance, our friends at Alliance Gator. So you can use this to buy some Gator Base or buy Extreme Edge or buy some uh, Nitro Sand uh, or Flex Lock Sand from any Tackle Block dealer. Uh, and that winner is Sarah Burt from A and Z Interlock from Limoges, also near Ottawa. That works out well. I guess uh, Ryan was telling his friends to watch today. So we got Sarah Burt, who's winning the $250 from Alliance. Uh, we have the coffee maker, which I am still using every day. The Ox coffee box. It is solid. And we're giving that to, what is your name? Mike. Oh, boy. Mike Hvesta. I don't know if the H is silent or not. Uh, Hvesta from Rockwood Landscape Company in Alexandria, Minnesota. So congratulations, Mike. You're winning the coffee maker. And we got... Three more of the Tackle Block sample booklet kit. So these sample books, this thing is full of them. Oh, try not to break everything. This thing is full of them. So we are shipping these out. If you have not purchased one and you're not winning one tonight, I don't know what you're waiting for because this tool makes hardscape sales easier. It helps upselling to the client easier. It makes the sales calls go faster. You look like a professional when you're there talking to the customer. Uh, it's fantastic. We're selling them for $500. They're honestly worth more than that. Uh, and we're giving a bunch of them away. Three more again tonight. So if you are interested in buying that, go to techoblock.com slash sample dash books. And you can get your own. But uh, tonight, three people are winning them. We're going to go with... First one from Omaha, Nebraska, Cynthia Morales from uh, Doug's Ecoscapes. Congratulations, Cynthia from Doug's Ecoscapes. 
Second winner is Chris Hawks from Seahawks Incorporated in uh, Villarica, Massachusetts. And the last winner, oh, this is fun, I know you, Zachary Key. Zach from Key Landscape and Irrigation, one of our techno pros in New Hampshire. You're winning the uh, final kit of this six-week uh, big party that we've got here with Hardscaper. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us over this uh, six-week period. It's been awesome. It's been a lot of fun. It's great to see so many contractors participating. Uh, we .com, and uh, we have seen thousands of companies. The feedback has been very positive. The comments have been very positive. The questions and the exchanges have been super rewarding. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to keep the fun going with the Hardscape Growth Podcast. If you have not checked that out yet, uh, the 10th episode was released yesterday. So there's lots of great stuff out there. Um, and uh, we've had some awesome guests on that show. And I'm having a lot of fun uh, hosting it. So uh, please check that out. You can check it out on Apple Podcasts. You can check that out on Spotify. You can check that out on Sounder. Uh, or you can go to hardscaper.com and click on podcasts and check them out. But uh, really, really, really awesome episodes. And we have a lot of really good ones coming up too every single week, all year. Uh, thank you, Captain Crow. We're trying really hard with the podcast. Thank you, Alliance uh, Gator Ontario. Uh, and uh, thank you, everyone. We're going to have more stuff. And uh, if you have ideas for topics that we should talk about with future episodes, uh, future uh, question and answer periods, uh, if you know someone who should be a guest on the podcast, or if you want to be a guest on the podcast, uh, hit us up here on Hardscaper. You can shoot us a DM. Uh, you can shoot me a DM as well. Uh, I'm on both accounts. I have my Alex from Tackle Block, and I have this one here. Um, but uh, for sure, uh, this is about building a community that helps the industry do better. Uh, we can grow a lot if we work together. And uh, like my dad always liked to say, the sun shines for everyone. So. Uh, if we view everyone as competitors, it's a really small place. If we view everyone else as peers in an industry that's growing, it's a lot more fun to go to work every day. So hopefully uh, we can keep helping each other out. And um, that's it for tonight. I'm going to go home now. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good one.